19-year-old Roxanne Paltoff disappeared after walking out of a budget inn in Austin, Texas. Call if you've seen her. Protecting the borders against illegal immigrants, terrorists, and drug dealers is a thorny problem down here in Texas. Not long ago, a very puzzling and disturbing case from down at the border was brought to my attention. And as John Lieberman explains, it's one of those cases where the more you look at it, the more questions it raises. It started out just like an ordinary day on the U.S.-Mexican border when a sensor used to detect illegal entry to the U.S. was tripped. Agent Joe Compion spots a van speeding down the solitary farm road leading away from the river. Its description was radioed to agents up ahead. Perhaps realizing he was trapped, the driver turns back to Mexico and straight into the arms of Agent Compion. At this point, the van comes to a screeching halt right about where that car is at. The driver bails out of the car, starts running down the road. Agent Compion, with shotgun in hand, orders him to stop in English and in Spanish. But the suspect doesn't stop. In fact, he makes a mad dash for the river. Right about here at the top of the levee, Agent Compion catches up to the drug smuggler. As they approach the edge of the levee, he leaps on his back and they go rolling down in a heap. They struggle and the suspect starts toward the river again. He suddenly turns around, points what Agent Compion believes to be a gun. Agent Compion pulls his own weapon and opens fire. The suspect is almost at the river's edge when Agent Nacho Ramos arrives on the scene. Yells at the smuggler to halt. The smuggler wheels around with what Agent Ramos believes is a gun. Agent Ramos fires a single shot, and the smuggler disappears down the bank into the Rio Grande. Ramos watched the suspect appear on the other side of the river, jump into a waiting car, and speed away. For good reason, agents discovered a million dollars worth of marijuana in his abandoned van. It was a typical day on the front lines of the drug war. So common that Ramos and Compion didn't report firing their weapons to a supervisor. Neither agent believed the suspect had been hit. But a month later, Osvaldo Aldredi Davila, a Mexican national, surfaces. He claimed he'd not only been shot by agents Ramos and Compion in his left buttock, but that he was also unarmed. These guys crossed the line, shot an unarmed guy running away. They then lied about it, covered it up, destroyed the evidence, and wrote a false police report. The U.S. attorney believed Aldredi. Because the border agents failed to notify a supervisor of the shooting, it was evident to him the agents were covering up a crime, when in fact, it appeared to be only a minor procedural error. They took an administrative violation, punishable by three days leave without pay, and from that, built everything else on their case upon that to make these guys look guilty of very serious offenses. The prosecutor's star witness, accused drug smuggler Osvaldo Aldredi Davila. He received immunity to testify against the agents. Both Ramos and Compion testified that they saw something glinting in Aldredi's hand. Both believed he was indeed armed. Their story was rejected by 12 citizens in the community after a two and a half week trial. And we talked to the jurors and overwhelmingly they said no, we didn't believe that guy. We didn't believe the drug smuggler. But we were bothered by the fact they didn't file a report about the discharge of the firearm. And we think they, they must have felt like it wasn't a good shoot. If they didn't report it, it wasn't a good shoot. Agents Compion and Ramos were sentenced to the mandatory minimum given to a criminal who uses a gun in the commission of a crime a dozen years in a federal penitentiary. These guys are going to do more time than many child molesters and rapists. Is that fair? Congress sets the penalties. I brought the charges that they committed. But the question remains, was justice really served? This woman is one of three jurors who changed her vote from not guilty to guilty because she was led to believe it had to be a unanimous decision. Had I known that it would have been okay for us to have had a mistrial, um, then I wouldn't have changed my vote from not guilty to guilty. They didn't deserve to go to prison for not reporting a shooting. 
The case has set off a firestorm of disbelief. No, a government that I've given my life to, to come after me the way it has. Um, it's just been unbelievable. Several hundred thousand have signed petitions asking President Bush to pardon the agents, and numerous congressmen have jumped aboard the pardon bandwagon. I am very, very disappointed in the indifference by this White House as it relates to these two men and their families. They are an example of being crucified by the federal government, quite frankly. Agent Ignacio Nacho Ramos, once nominated for the coveted Border Patrolman of the Year Award, and Agent Campion are awaiting their appeal while sitting in prison. We still have to have a lot of faith. We still have a lot of people on our side fighting for us. And we just can't give up. I can't give up. I can't give up for my three boys. My worst fear is not to, not to be there to see them grow up. All, my, all, all three of my children. As for the star witness, even though he was caught in a later drug raid, he hasn't been charged in that case either. I think these Border Patrol agents made an honest mistake. They picked up those shell casings and didn't think they shot this alleged drug dealer. Well, you know what? They're paying the ultimate price, 11 years in jail. Now, this guy, this is what really bothers me. This alleged drug dealer who was caught with a million dollars worth of pot is suing the United States government, the United States taxpayer, you and I, for $5 million. Something's very wrong here, and something needs to be done about it. Deputy Sheriff Joe Hudnall of the Kern County Sheriff's Department in California died when another driver crossed into his lane and struck his patrol car head on. He was a 10-year law enforcement veteran. In his spare time, Deputy Hudnall loved riding dirt bikes and camping with his family. He leaves behind a wife and four children. tonight. This is a sketch of a man accused of at least five rapes of other men in a Houston, Texas suburb. Cops in Sherman Oaks, California, say that David Allen Weir shot his girlfriend to death shortly after they returned home from working at the same bar together. And cops say Miguel Torres shot and killed his estranged wife as she was leaving her job in Redding, Pennsylvania. I'm John Walsh. Thanks a lot for watching tonight. And remember, you can make a difference.